being in the eye of the storm, letting go of the old and embracing the new. And without further ado, let me thank you for being here. Welcome. And I, as I've been doing in previous calls, I would like to just open it up to you to start with what is your perspective? We had a siren today. We haven't had that many. Thank God. I hope it stays like that. But and then yeah. I heard it was a false alarm, even though we heard very loud booms. So, that's strange, too. Yeah. My, so what do you make of everything? My perspective on that is is actually it happened on the third day, I believe, of the war here in Sfat. And uh, everyone freaked out. Like there there was a uh, a WhatsApp group that my wife was on and the lady was like, it's starting, you know, and it's yeah. like. And uh, literally, I had friends that that skipped town they got into their cars and they just fled and we didn't know what to expect we thought that they were going to attack from lebanon and literally they're gonna you know have gliders and they're gonna come into houses my i mean people really went into into panic which wasn't and that unreasonable it wasn't time. unreasonable right it, absolutely i was praying mincha actually and and the thing goes off and my wife is freaking out she's like let's go like like she was like pulling me and i'm like in the middle of prayer and i'm and uh, listen i don't know if it's right or wrong or whatever it is but i continued praying and i know that there's a time that you know you you definitely have to go but i i felt like in prayer i felt like the safest to tell you the truth i heard this coming um, but I, I definitely calmed Miriam and I told her, don't worry if this happens again, I, I, I will come into the, you know, I, I wanted to make her feel good, but what turned out to be is that it was, it was a false alarm and everyone was freaking out. And the, and the, and the point in case is that it was a false alarm <laughs> and basically we have so many of these false alarms going on and it's very hard for us to judge and to gauge which ones are valid and real because our nervous systems are, are, you know, wired and fight and fight or flight and versus which ones we could breathe into. We mm -hmm. could say, I could be calm and I could be still, and I could be in the in the eye of the storm, right? Which is why I picked, I, I wanted to talk about this today. Um, and it happened again today. And in schools, and I could hear my neighbors, and, you know, and of course, you know, I, I uh, feeling of unease. Um, and then afterwards, it was a false alarm. And or so they said, and, and so they said, but listen, I th I, it was, it's a big reminder for us that, yes, there are so many things that are crazy right now going on in the world, like beyond, right? Things that we have not seen in 70, in, in, in 75 years and right, right, I mean, since the Holocaust. Yeah. We haven't seen a world like this. And yet we have so much of a reason to also be sure that something really good is happening and i'd really like to delve into this good. you know these these paradoxes that we're in this place of just complete uncertainty i mean here we both live here in Svat in the north of israel and i mean we don't know what's going to happen tonight we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow right and what exactly is 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 going to to unfold? But yet, but we what we both of us know, and all of us here on this call know very deeply inside, and this is the reason why you're here, is that we're sure that something great and something amazing and a, a birth of something is happening, and we just have to figure out how we can hold on and how we can again be in the eye of this tremendous storm which uh which is spiraling right how do we how do we stay in this in this centered place before so, you go before you start to answer that i'd just like to ask the the listeners 
Does everybody agree with that? Do you feel that something new is being born? Like, I'd really like to get a temperature from you guys. Don't be shy. Absolutely. Norman, Beatrix, yes. Sarah, yes. Rosemary, yes. Absolutely, definitely. Okay. <laughs> All right, you're right. You're you're right. You're right on. I ain't so, lying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how do we stay in the center of the storm? And also, I, at some point, I, if you're okay with it, I would really love for you to speak a little bit to Israel versus out of Israel. And I know a lot of people are concerned because a lot of people are out of Israel. Yeah. And then some people are concerned. Some people ran out of Israel, like you said. I I would have I would have done that had I not been so paranoid, probably. If I was, and also if I wasn't watching videos of the Rebbe saying it's you know to leave. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so I understand the even, impulse. Maybe we could even start with that because okay. um, I think that's a very important place to start. You know, um, difference between living in Israel, right, and whether Jewish, Gentile, or what does that mean? I think right now there are two choices in the world that people can make. It's pretty much black or white. There's no there's no gray a a anymore. And that is, are you, are you standing with Israel? Or are you standing with moral hypocrisy? With complete, utter lies, ignorance, and a lack of a choice to educate oneself to become not ignorant. I'm a human being. Uh, yeah, and this this is true in Oxford. It's true in Princeton. It's true in Harvard and NYU and all of our elite Columbia, Col Columbia University. It's all the elite, the professors that are quote unquote so smart and choosing to sort of you know see something in such a skewed way where, I mean, it just doesn't even make sense if we wrap our minds around it. We didn't even have a chance to mourn yeah. our, our dead after 1,300 of our brothers and sisters, babies, women, et cetera, were brutally killed. And right, and right there and then, it's a reason to come out against Israel. Not just I Israel, mean, to come out against Jews. To come it's out not against like it even Jews. has anything like I can understand because the, the media has been so warped because for a lot of reasons, I can understand why people might have a false idea of what's actually happening here. But um, the fact that it would arouse like, what do you care? Like, you don't care about atrocities in Syria, atrocities in anywhere, China. And all of a sudden, it's like everybody in the world who's like. Yeah, and yeah. and 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 Russia is is you know is is um you know having a say on the on the on the human rights council or whatever I it is. I think three quarters planet. of the human rights council is is is, is, is vicious dictatorship. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, we don't want to go into po too much politics right now because it's that's not, that's it's insanity. Not politics. In it's, yeah, it's not politics. It's 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 it's, it's not it's not politics or entertainment. It's, exactly. No, no, no. It's unfortunately it's reality. Uh, <laughs> It, it it is it is insanity is is reality, but um, but we have a choice right now. And going back to that choice, we we can be either with Israel or against Israel. And this is what God says to Abraham in Lech Lecha at the, right right at the beginning of the birth of the Jewish people, that I will bless all who bless you, and I will curse all those who curse you. And this is a fact. It's a fact that went on throughout history. We don't find the mighty Greeks anymore. We don't find the Romans anymore. The mighty Persian kingdom, okay, actually the Maral says that they're going to come back at the end of days and they're going to actually be together with the Arabs, with, with the Muslims. So the second empire is going to come back. That's what the Maral says. Wow. But we don't see the mighty empire. We don't see the, again, but what do we see? We see the Jewish people and here we are. And all those that tried to curse us are not here any longer. And those that are watching, those that are watching, right, that are witnessing what's going on and that have opened up the, you know, the, the, the 
annals of, of history, just opening up the books. They're opening up the, the Bible. They're opening up and, you know, and choosing to see things in the right perspective. Then they see that this is a war of the Jewish people. It's a war of light over darkness. And essentially, there's one there's a choice of either to be Israel or to not be Israel. Israel is Israel, which actually Israel is called Israel because it means Yashar Kel, the angel named Jacob Israel because it says Yashar, you were straight with God. What does that mean to be straight with God? Don't be a crooked liar. Don't be a finagler. Don't be you're straight with God. There's honesty. I see something and I and 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 that's the truth. I may not always stand up to it. I may not be perfect, but at least I know that this is the truth and I won't delude myself. And so basically we have a choice of being Israel in Israel and outside of Israel. Are you Israel? And that means basically what we're going to be talking about tonight, you know, a little bit in greater depth. What does that mean to be Israel? What does that mean, essentially, for us to be that? So is it more technically dangerous to be in Israel right now on a military level? Yes, right? Is it more dangerous to be outside of Israel in on a spiritual level and perhaps a physical level? You know, yes. You know, my brother, my brother, all my family lives abroad in, in, in the U.S. And they were like, you know, we don't know which one is safer. You know, there's a fear to walk around with a kippah or walk or, or to have a mezuzah or to have a this and that. And, and to be a college student nowadays is, you know, you're risking your potentially risking your life. As absurd as that sounds after paying $80,000 of tuition, you know, to some of these universities, these kids don't feel safe there. And so we are we are affirming or reaffirming what does that mean for us to be Israel? Again, whether we're living in Israel, whether we're Jewish or whether we're Gentile and we're standing up for we're standing up on the right side, right? This is the choice right now. So what does that mean? I Sorry, I just saw a question there. I can't. I, I can't get to the. Um, so Tikva is asking if you think oh. that those those. She said, Rabbi, do you think that for those of us who are pure of heart and stand with Israel, and have been trying to convert, that eventually Mashiach will pave the way for us to come to somehow? Listen, um, I I think there's definitely we there's definitely that those of you righteous Gentiles uh, that are standing with Israel will be blessed for that. You know, there's no question about that. And what does that, what does that include? And how, what does that look like? You know, it's, it, you're standing, you're standing on the right side, basically. She's asking about converting though. For some people, it's a tremendous, tremendous challenge to be allowed to convert, which is. At this point. And it's strange. Yeah. Um, Listen, I, we, we we don't know exactly how it's going to turn out and what's going to what is going to look like. I mean, but I would say like wherever you find yourself at this moment, you know, in whatever type of a, of a body and wherever you are in the world, that's the way Hashem intended you to be. For and now. just for now, and 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 of course for now, because all we have is the now. So you're right here in the now and being you. And doing the best um, in doing and being you. So I think like, let's, you know, if, if you are you and right, and I and my, right, every, we're all doing our part, then, you know, then we're, we're, we're doing the right thing. So does that help, Tikva? Or okay, good. Good. Okay. I also, I've, I, I've heard, I have to say that I heard from, um, Rabbi Yitzchak Ginsburg, for those of you who know him, that it's that his opinion, which is not a popular opinion, that nobody even says it, but that everybody should be, everybody who wants to become Jewish should be, it should be facilitated like really quickly and that that will be positive for the Jewish people. I'm just throwing it out there as an opinion that, you know, there's, 
it, there's a lot of mystery here. And I think, yeah, for yeah. now, we're exactly where we're supposed to be. I think in the future, all of us are going to have great soul elevations. Uh, and any absolutely. soul that is meant to be Jewish, that is essentially Jewish, will be facilitated in, in that process. And and, in and, and, process. And, and not only that, Shifra, but it says that um, in the Zohar, that the tribes are going to come back. So we've got, so currently the Jewish people are, are two and a half tribes, right? Judah yeah. and, 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 the, and the Levites. But then we've got the other tribes that are coming back. That means that we're going to have like hundreds of millions of Jewish people. And um, we don't know what that's going to look like. I think that probably a lot of people who are longing to convert probably are from the tribes, although we don't have a technical way of dealing with that right now. Right. But Yeah. Our yeah. souls are all on a journey and we're all going to the same destination. Yeah. Even if we're different cars of the train at the moment, um, everybody's a teacher to someone and a student to someone, a mentor to someone and, you know, receiving from someone else. So I think, yeah, I, I agree with you so much that embracing where we are physically, <laughs> metaphysically um, as a starting point for the work that we're here to do. in all of history because actually this is we, we are the last generation before Mashiach before the actual revelation and that means that we are the last stop that means it's like everything like all of our previous re reincarnations all of our epigenetics uh which we actually spoke about last time about yeah and all of all of history world history jewish history comes down to, to to us right now and the arizal says that that we are the generation of those that came out of egypt we're that generation that has been re reincarnated and we're like redoing the job and again we're seeing the the enemies the same enemies we're seeing amalek we're seeing that 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 brazen enemy that stands against the Jewish people, like head to head. And that, that's, of course, Hamas. And that's, you know, and, and, and their, their proxies in Iran that are standing up. And we're seeing the nations of the world. We're seeing nations such as like Yitro and, you know, and he, he converted and the other nations were, were, were softened up. And of course, all of this journey that we could say in Jewish history is all to really bring light to the world. That was, that was, really enforced reinforced by by Abraham and then the Jewish people coming into the land of Israel the land of Israel represents a microcosm of the world a microcosm of the six of the seven nations that were they're called the land of the seven nations and coming into the land of Israel is basically bringing light on what is called Eretz Canaan right or Palestine or from the river to the sea you know how they will, you know, will be free. What does that mean? Will be free? It means that they want to take it back to being be free the, of land, the land of, yeah, to be Yudin free and to be um, the land of Canaan, which is what, what does that mean? What is the land of Canaan? What is this war of Israel for Israel? Why is it so beyond anything that we see in for any other country, any other nation, right? It's because- yeah. Because it is a war of transformation, of transforming the, the, the material, transforming the self, transforming the, the, the land that we have inside, right? And again, going back, we're, we're this last generation and we are like the, the end of it, right? And we're, we're, we're going, we're, we're holding. So... We have to say that, wow, you know, like, look at that. What's the chance of that? We've been chosen. Like, really? You could say, like, it's such a crazy generation, and it is so difficult. You know, the Midrash says that Moshe saw the last generation, saw our generation, and basically said, I'm humbled. Moshe was humbled the most humble person that ever lived on the face of the earth, who's that hum that humility? The humility is 
for us to, to, to say like, we live in this generation that our consciousness is so vied for there's such a short attention span in 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 our minds there's such a worry about we have so many contradictions so many opposites that are going on in our lives on a personal level this is before the war right and 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 how are we supposed to make this this transition this conquest so to speak of 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 the land right how do we make that conquest and this is this war that that that's going on and either we're with Israel again or we are with Canaan or Palestine actually do you know what the word Palestine means it goes back to no. the ancient Philistines which is very interesting because they came from Gaza um and but is it because didn't the Romans call this Palestina and wasn't wasn't the Jewish uh, the the Jewish the, settlement called Palestine for a long time because of the ancient Philistines that are brought in the Tanakh, right? That wow. were always doing war from Gaza against King David. This is like a long-term kind of a thing. Gaza wow. and, and Israel is, this goes back, 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 right? Samson was in Gaza. But anyways, wow. yeah, he took the gates of Gaza down. Like, whew, that's one tough place. But um, Uh, so I, I, I was I was mentioning about sorry I lost. <laughs> I, I have to I'm having questions in my mind, so somebody else has to remind us exactly where we are. You said this has been going on for a long time. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. said that we it's a war against Amalek, which is Hamas and their proxies. Right. Um, oh, that, so, that you asked where the the name exactly. Palestine came from. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So Palestine actually comes from the word plishtim, and plishtim means an open. Uh, like an open space, like in in the laws of Shabbat, there's there's called a mavoy mefulash, an open area. And if it's mm -hmm. open area like that, then you can't carry in it because it's called a public domain. So the plishtim actually are, their agenda is to make it a public domain. What's the difference between the public domain and a private domain? On a spiritual level, the public domain represents the place of the multitude of the of the dis, of of separation of the many right that are going on versus the place of the one yechido shel olam right mm -hmm. the oneness which is what avram came to the world veikra hashem avram kel olam he called the world god god and he's in the world, and he's the creator of the world. He is constantly manifesting the world every single second. So the plishtim, we're trying to do this work, trying to do this job on the land of Israel, back, all the way back, right? With Samson, and then with King David, and so on and so forth. And it's interesting how that name was taken, adopted by the Romans and by the British, and it is still hyped up. Right, that Philistine, because it's that it's that modern day, like let's make this this place of 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 the multitude and and not the place of oneness of unity, which is what Israel really means. Which is why they're so warlike. Why they they make war against each other and the, their own people and us and think think about it to 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 kill. I don't want to be too graphic, but to kill an innocent child what in what kind of a separation like mental separation one is in dark dark mental separation it, it is i mean it, it's, it all it's all it's incomprehensible it's all incomprehensible yeah I, I can't, and, and I, whoever I, I funds them there. and whoever let them in and you know whatever it's all on every level it's incomprehensible I, i'm just what's what's <laughs> right now coming to me as in a certain sense the most incomprehensible is just the the waves of hundreds of thousands or millions of haters that are just standing up to hate us. Like what, where, why, who are you? What do you, without even an agenda, without it, they have no personal stake in the matter. I guess that is the Ruach of Amalek as Tikka yeah, is saying, yeah. I guess that is what it is. It's just baseless, baseless, baseless <laughs> hatred. That's separation. You can't yeah. exist. You can't, I can't handle it if you exist. Right. It's really crazy how biblical it's becoming and how totally. fast. 
And like so I'd like, nowhere. I'd like to pivot this, <laughs> Shifra, if it's okay, because I, I feel like we could get stuck in the in the war of them against us and the darkness. And I, and, and I don't, that that's not where we really should be because okay. that's, we shouldn't be in the new, like we, sh I know like we have to check the news and we, you know, whatever, but like when we're overly in it, it's just, it, it, it doesn't do us good. And I think like what, where we really want to be is in this space in the mind, in, in, in the mind, in, in the mind frame of that, we're going towards something that we are birthing something that something is happening. So how do we feel that, right? How do we feel this new reality that is there? How do we lean more into it? And this is what I'd like to talk about a little bit um, today. So there is a there's a there's a hymn or a song that is sung on Motzei Shabbat on on after Shabbat, um, which is Hamavdil ben Kodesh lechol the one that separates holiness and the mundane should whatever. So one of the stanzas there is Hamavdil ben Maim lemaim that the one that separated the water from the water should. Let us live me your mind from two days. Let us live from the from the time of two days. The one that separated the water and water should help us live from the time of two days. And that's referring to a verse in Isaiah that talks about the third day. On the third day, Hashem will 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 give it life, will give us life. But there's a there's a concept of the two days. What are those two days that are referring to? Those are the two days of Galus of separation the idea of the two on the second day of creation god created separation there was separation between the higher waters and right and the lower waters there was argument there was strife right. gullus all of exile comes from separation all of geula is oneness so the one that that separated water from water because even the separation is from him should let us live and see the third day. The third day is the is the time of the unity, the time of the unity. Time on the third day, we know it says Kito twice. But the third day is referring to the time of the Geula. Because the two days that we are in currently, what does that mean? We're in exile on the one day. And then on the other day, we're like, we are going towards something. And that feeling of being in transit is 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 a harsh feeling. It's a very yeah. difficult feeling. You know, when we're in transit in the airport, right? You're like, okay, I got another plane to catch, you know, in this area. So I'm sitting there and whatever. You just want to be somewhere already. You know, you don't want to just sit there. And when you're when we move homes, when we move homes, it's like such a difficult time, right? That that it's actually a trauma, you know that that is that is recordable, you know that we could say it's a trauma. I'm going from here. I'm I moved from this house. I'm going to another house. Well, we're like that now in in well we we've been like that for a while, but right now it's like hyper felt that we're in between days. It's going this way and it's going that way and Hashem should help us live and get through it help us live and get through it and actually a big way to get through it is the energy of Shabbat which is called the which is which is that energy it says anyone that keeps the Shabbat will be saved right from this strife of Gogo Magog or or the 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 the, the difficulty um yeah, I, I feel like any question, like, uh, yeah, first of all, who wrote outside? this about the two days? I just oh, want to make so sure I'm understanding it. It's also. it's a it's a hymn that's sung on Motzei Shabbat, uh, after the Shabbat. So we say, Hamavdil, right? Hamavdil, Hamavdil, bin Kodesh Lechol, Chato. Actually, it's written, right? It's so. So Yitzchak uh, Hakatan. So Hamavdil ben Maim Maim on the letter A. Yechayenu meyumaim should give us give us life. Let let us get through. Get us through the 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 two days. 
that and word. two days is the, I guess you're saying two days is the entire concept of two of separation of conflict of the paradigms. old and the new I'm, I'm even thinking the second generation from creation was Cain and Hevel Cain and Abel and already there was conflict to the death yeah so two is a dangerous number yeah okay yeah 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 so on on a on a personal level what does that mean the the two days for us right let's like really internalize this you know the the two days for us means that we're coming from healing we're coming from trauma we're coming from we're we're coming from exile mentality we could say that's the first day that we're we you know we're getting through the difficulties and the truth is i mean we've been going through this in the, the last four or five years i mean with covid yeah. the two rounds of covid i mean it's unprecedented how we're how we're being thrown into um healing basically you know we're 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 thrown into it that we have no choice but to heal and we are almost like in this place right now that either we've healed on some level and now we're really to we're ready to really fully own our life and if we haven't done the work well woe on to you woe, woe on to us because then you are certainly confused and certainly not on the level of Israel and 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 shouting and chanting and totally in that dark place which has to go because that's the old world and that's that's the that's the that's the place of separation that's the place of of uh of of darkness and uh and and we're going towards a place of unity we're going towards a place of love we're going in a place of light that's where we're going towards and here we are we find ourselves in that eye of the storm we find ourselves like right there we're on the on a deep level on a very deep le level we know that we got this we know that we got this we know that i mean throughout history Hashem has been with us. Hashem is with us and is never going, going to leave us. And we know that. And we know that on, on a soul level, on a, on a very deep level. And you see this with the young kids going out and young soldiers, 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds that are literally giving their lives up. God bless them. And, and it's so painful and so hurtful to see these beautiful these beautiful neshamas, beautiful brave that are fighting for freedom, fighting for 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 their for their families and and for the right to exist as a Jew. And they're not asking any questions. They're they're there, and and they showed up four hundred more than four hundred, like or two two hundred thousand reservists show up flying in from the, from the United States and they're showing up Am Yisrael Chai and people are donating people are, and, and they're, and they're cooking. I mean, you know, like everyone's doing their best. Everyone, everyone is just on the, it's, it's phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. And, and all you have is Jewish pride. You have such pride of Am Yisrael Chai and it's so, it's so resounding that roar of, of the Jewish lion, that we become awakened, right? That we know that this is Am Yisrael Chai. We're absolutely certain of it. And yet, like we hear the noise, we hear those, those, the, the voice of, of, of negativity, of darkness, of, of anger. And it, and it comes from this, well, on a, on a very physical on a on a physical level here you know on the, on the ground you know not far from lebanon right that they would still willingly just shoot rockets into civilian areas just for the sake of hurting uh civilians right um and and of course in gaza so uh actually inside of israel too and inside in the inside of israel and it's 
and and again it's it's that uh it's that darkness of the of the day of the the two days like we're seeing the light we're seeing the Am Yisrael Chai. We're seeing the fire that we really have, the Geula me mentality of, of the, the Havda. There's no separation between us anymore. Are you kidding me? Like, um, we're, we're going to, you know, we thought that we're, we're, we're against each other. We're, we're separated from each other. And then the next very day, we're united, right? The next very day, we are one. And yet we're coming from these two places and we're and it's and it's not simple to be there in that noise hearing the noise of of darkness right of craziness on social media and crazy craziness in the media and and in academia and all of that marches throughout the world etc and you know and uh and yet to have that deep conviction and trust, right? How do, how do we do that, right? How do we get into that eye of the storm? This and is where we're would, at. Would you conflate that with somebody asked earlier, how do we do the conquest? Like you're talking about the whole idea, which I've wondered about so much, like that God first gave the land to the, to the nations of Canaan, and then he told us to conquer it, which puts us at a state of war and conflict also. And that's got to be parallel. Actually, it says no? that God first gave the land to the to the descendants of shame. It says that in Parsha mm -hmm. in in uh, in Parsha um, Noah, and then the Canaanites. It says over there, the verse says they were on the land and they conquered it. So we really have because we're the children of shame. Canaan first. comes from Ham, right? The third the the, the, the child of Ham. So. It's really ours, but then we have to do the job of conquering what is truly ours. We have to go to our innate true self, and we have to go through the conquest because we have to go through the conquest because we wouldn't, we wouldn't appreciate it if it was just given to us. And we constantly have that in Jewish history when things I are good. That's true. We just were like, yeah, you know, let's take the our time and let's 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 follow this latest trend and do things like that. And you know, and then God is like, Hashem is boop. You know what? I think that's human history. Yeah. Not just Jewish history. <laughs> yep. Well, yeah, and yet Rashi history. said Rashi says that God gave it to, you know, what we're supposed to say to the nations, Shame. that God gave it to them, and then gave then and then that, he took it and gave it to us. Yeah, right. the whole conquering thing, the whole like ownership having to work for it so what is that and is that part of reconciling the two days so Hasidus says that what are the what is the land of the seven nations it's the land of the seven midot the seven characteristic traits that we are comprised of of chesed of kindness of gvur of discipline of harmony of of fortitude of acknowledgement of humility of bonding and of kingship and that could go on either side it could go to the side of negativity so kindness could be i'm kind to someone because i really want something out of that right it's called the klipa the other side of chesed it's really not chesed right gavura discipline unabashed and and not fixed Discipline is the worst thing, et cetera, and all of them. So what we when what we do when we conquer the land of Canaan, we're really conquering our own inner psyche, our own selves that are made of, you know, the main thing it says in, in Tanya, it says in, in Kabbalah that who are we really? We're really our midot. We're really our characteristic traits. That's really who we are. Right? It says in Tanya that Hillel went to do a chesed with his neshama, but most all of us were basically the animal soul, and our animal soul is needs to be conquered. How is it conquered by the mindfulness of mind, where we can choose to have a response? We don't have to react impulsively. We could breathe, and then we can choose the response that we want 
and then we acknowledge our we um we practice that and we work on that and then that becomes our newfound nature so when we do that we we conquer the land of canaan the land of philistine which is saying like yippee party all day chesed here let's do that it, you know let's do that it's like a college dorm where everything because everything is and then and then it's like the adult almost is is saying like it's not saying you can't you can't party like that you know but it, and it can't it doesn't mean but it means let's do things in in their optimal way in their highest way and not only are you not going to lose out you're going to actually have the greatest connection because you because you're optimizing yourself to be in line and in sync with Hashem's will and when you're in line with Hashem's will you're connected to the true oinig the true pleasure and yeah could I could I you can say no but I'd like to ask you um just because it's so serious for everybody would you be willing to share anything of just where we are right now of what of where you're finding those conflicts or where you're being taken that you haven't gone before in terms yes. of conquering Midos or reconciling or yeah letting Absolutely. go of the past so I'll, I'll tell you this this feels very very personal like this idea of being in the in between the two days because on a very deep level it's like i've I've been trained, like I've been training for this. I've been training for, for it's like, be, it, it's like a, a commando that's been training for years and is like, okay, boom, go. Like now you're on. So it's like, you know, like in the books of the Zohar, the books of Hasidus, the books of, you know, connect connection to the Rebbe and connection to the to Tzaddikim, we know where it's at. It's unequivocally clear. And it's unequivocally clear that we're connected to the light and we're connected to the truth. And we know that through knowing this on a, on a deeper level and trusting it and, 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 and employing in, in our ability to connect via prayer, via uh, good deeds uh, and we know that we're connected, but yet now is really, a, it's not about just knowing it anymore on a cognitive level. It's about living it. It's about being the light, you know, like they say, be the change. So it, there's no, there's no room anymore. There's no lead back into my being this let's try this again let's you know let's try voting another government and let, let's go through another it's like none of that crap anymore like now it's like we're we're you know we're living you know and we're 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 connecting to um to who we're meant to be on 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 the real level so that on on a personal level that 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 feeling is something which is which is basically birthing something new. It's like being in the ninth and knowing that, like, like a, a, a child, you know, a child is coming out. Something is happening here, but it's an uncomfortable kind of a feeling. Yet, yes, you know, you're still operating. You're still connecting. You're still you're still there. But yet, but what does that mean? You're still feeling that pain, and, you're, and justifiably because you are in pain, and you know, and all of us are in pain. Uh, living through these times um it's impossible not to be and you wouldn't be normal if you didn't feel pain right you'd be psych psychotic right um and we're feeling that pain of the why and yet we're transitioning into fully trusting and being 100 percent in Easier said than done, but it's almost like there's no choice. It's I you're you totally. I wouldn't say easier said than done because it's so much bigger than that. I just feel like what's we're being asked to flip the inside into the outside. Yeah, and it, it it's so uncomfortable. Yeah, it's so deeply uncomfortable, and it's yeah, full trust, 
Yeah. It, what is it's what, a butterfly, what? but you know what? A butterfly is there. And we take that, that image of the, you know, we've got that. And yes, it's like, oh, you know, that, that, um, you know, that lar larva, right? Around the, uh, the caterpillar. Around, the, uh, oh, around the, the caterpillar. The cocoon, the chrysalis. The cocoon yeah. and the chrysalis, yeah. right? They're ugly and they're not, but, but they're, but it's that it's that analogy of 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 birth and and there's so many other analogies of it right the phoenix and the you know all all those other chicken the chicken yeah. right we've got but bottom line is it's not comfortable in whichever way it it, it really is it, it really is busting forth and just just doing that but not from a place of of uh anguish necessarily and a place of, ooh, you know, but actually coming from a place of light and stillness and calm. And, and, and it feels contradictory to actually even feel that. And in many ways, we feel bad. Like, how could I even feel that? that? I should not be feeling that. How could I smile? I shouldn't be smiling. And because I look at what's, you know, people are going through or whatever it is. Now is not the time to smile. Time to smile more than any time. Now is the time to be more calm more than any time in your life. If you ever train for this, now is the time to be that. Easier said than done, but it is actually easier than we think. You know, and I'll I'll give you an example. Throughout this the this month, I mean, more than a month right now that we're in, month and a half of this crazy roller coaster. You know, I've had times that I fell off the roller coaster off the bike and and you're like, "Oh, I'm, you know, I'm down." You know, that kind of a thing. And um you know, and working with someone that 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 I did, you know, and you know, and a good friend just go ahead and get back on the bike like in other words go and sit down for two minutes outside on your porch and breathe close your eyes you know guys let's do this right now let's do this now is just a good a, a, a time as ever right thank you Hashem so let's close our eyes wherever you are with your feet on the ground and your back straight, dropping your shoulders, breathing through your nose, all the way down to your belly. Feeling those great thighs that are on the floor, which is connected to our Mother Earth, to Hashem's incredible creation. Breathing in and out. Just allowing the space that you're in to just almost fizzle in time and in place and find yourself under the sky. With the sun shining. And the air is perfectly crisp. Blue skies. Feeling yourself one. With the world outside. Just allowing yourself to feel what is going on inside of you. Any of the emotions, feelings, thoughts, and just give that love, give that place love and attention.
any of the dark places inside. Heaviness, worry, sadness, anger. Simply hold that space, feeling the embrace of the creator of the universe. And just listen. to what Hashem wants to tell you in this moment. And remember that you can always come to this moment being enveloped in the love of Hashem throughout his beautiful, incredible creation. Where we Feel connected. The entire God fearing, life loving Jews and Gentiles from around the world, knowing that we make a difference. in this eye of the storm that within it is completely safe and you can always come back to this place of echad, of unity where all six directions all permeate and resound unity, love, joy, and oneness. And that Feeling is something that you can give to others. Whether they choose to receive or do not, you are in Israel. In your land of the seven nations. And you can always enter the land of Israel. It is not in the news. It is not in the past. Not in the future. It is in the now as much as we want to evade the now and be in the past and in the future, the now is the third day. Where all presence comes from, where all connection comes from, where God's holy name, Yudke Vavke, the Hove, the present, is constantly recreating the universe. 
as much as our minds tell us that there is so much going on and there is a torrent of water in this great storm. Remember, there is a more accurate picture to this situation, and that is the now. All right, so could uh, take a number of breaths as we come to the present now. And I'm going to say thank you, Hashem, for this beautiful opportunity, for this beautiful moment. Thank you, Hashem. Mizmor letoda. Thank you, Hashem. So it just takes just getting on back on. And we know that we we have this opportunity. And we could all do it in our own way, in, it's just the two minutes of breathing, two minutes of just being present, putting away our iPhone and putting away our need to do something or be somewhere and to just be present. It's easier said than done because there's such a storm <laughs> that we are feeling. But again, that storm is part of the old. That is, that's the storm that we know that we're addicted to something that maybe it's time to let go of it now. Again, it's not putting any, not judging it. It's actually giving it love and saying, I know where you're coming from. I know why you're, I'm not, I'm not saying you're guilty. I'm not saying you're, I love you. I'm not judging you anymore. I'm not, I, I'm, I'm sorry for ever judging there. I, I, it's, we all have to give ourselves that extra love, that extra presence and, and to walk with our inner child there. That's, that's hurting. And, um, that is afraid and, you know, just like the Jewish people cross the sea of reeds, right? They cross the, the Yamsuf. Not easy to go through a turbulent water there. But we, 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 we know where to go for it. We know it, we're, we're there. We've got, the, we've got the Holy Torah. We've got the Hasidus. We've got you know, the wisdom of, the, uh, of, 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 of Kabbalah, of, Jew, of, of the ages. We've got you know, we've connected to great people and uh, connected to the right mindset, to positivity. It's like, you know, thank you, Hashem. You know, there was, there was this beautiful, beautiful young man that died in the, in the party um, in uh, Re'im. His name was Yehuda Bahar. Some of you may have seen the videos of him singing to his friend who was down. Now, this guy had such a positive mind frame. He used to say Mizmor Letoda over 10 times a day. He was singing about his about the neshama, Elokai neshama, Shenatata bin. You hear him singing. What a beautiful beacon of light this, this young man was a day before uh, being um, brutally killed. And that kind of 
that kind of uh, legacy is something that we 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 need to we hold on to, right? We hold on to these just great uh, people and these great, I you know these 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 incredible human beings that uh, that are all around us, right? Yesterday there was this there was an amazing you know soldier Yossi Hershkowitz who was just an, a principal of a school in in the Gush Etzion. I mean, you read about his life, you read about the kind of incredible legacy of heroes that are here, literally heroes. And you know, again, like we all have that opportunity of 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 being that hero, of stepping into that. Right. And 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 coming out of the victim mentality and stepping into the hero, um, stepping into the hero mentality, being that hero. Right. What you're what you took us through and what you're pointing to, it seems like a big part of this process. Like when you said we have to trust completely, we have no choice. It really reminds me of what we hear about the exodus from Egypt that, you know, God, God loved us because we followed him into the desert without knowing where we were going without. And I, I was just thinking when you're talking about the sea, like it's not just walking into the sea. I wonder if it was, I don't remember, but I wonder if it was, if we were scared that the water would start falling down on us again, like what kind of trust you have to have to have to go inside, a, inside a tunnel or a wall of water across an right. ocean across whatever yeah. and uh, yeah so it seems like the now that that being able to be with god to be with our i don't know if you said it explicitly but our real self that is the definition of who we are rather than the turbulent conflicting emotions which would be like the seven nations the canaanite nations yeah so that's a really clear map of on a personal development being level of what to aim for and then there's you know the other piece of it like we get triggered I mean I think all of us must get triggered and when we get when you get triggered I know for me the, the big thing is fear it's the biggest trigger that I that I get into and when triggered, we're outside of ourselves we're at deep odds with ourselves and everyone else so that has to be the other part of the work to know where we're going, what we're what we're aiming to anchor into and to deepen that anchor into. And at the same time, to be able to, you know, when you talk about letting go of the past, it's not a one-time thing. It's like every step is the possibility of finding something new that needs to go so that you can be more of who you are, connect more deeply into whatever it is that is the essence of a human being, a divine being, whatever that actually is. It's so much unknown now. I think that you know, use the example of um, a, an airplane trip or whatever, and yeah, it can be really annoying and irritating. But at least you have some idea of how long it's supposed to take to get there, and you know, even if your plane's delayed, so you have a. Even that is very stressful. But here, we don't know the length, we don't know the path. Um. Yeah, it's a, it's an, it's an amazing. It, yeah, it is. The end, end of Mashiach, the end, the right, right before. But what's interesting, Shifra, is like you were saying about crossing into the the sea, right, and not knowing what's there. Um, so it actually says that there were many camps that were there, and some of them were even very spiritual camps, but they didn't take the step forward. And the one camp that really God says to Mo Moshe to do is Vaisau, just go. In other words. Just go. Like, what, what does that mean on a on a personal developmental level? Right. Just go. It means that stop doubting yourself. Like, stop doubting if you think that you could do it. Stop doubting if you think that you have those abilities. Stop doubting, you know, your 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 belief that you're good enough. Like, stop doing. Like, basically. It's that belief that we're good enough and that doubt that is right there, that juncture in between the Yamsuf, in between the waters. And we're saying, 
well, if I pray for it enough, or maybe I just have to like succumb to just believing that, but we've been, we've done that in the past. And those are the four camps. And then let's like, let's go back into the habits. Let's get into the addictions and the fears and the, the and then let's fight it. Right. There were four camps there. Yeah. Like, let's fight that. Like, you're not good enough. You're not this and that, you know, placing those, uh, you know, those glass uh, uh, ceilings, right. Uh, for, for us that we've only, if I do that, then I'll be good enough and, and, and all that. And if I, if I pray enough and if I'm, and God says to Moshe, Vaisau, just go, just, just enter, just enter the space, enter the now, enter it, like enter, enter what you, you need to do. And don't think, don't think about it so much. Don't think about it. Yep. You know, it just occurred to me, what if, what if Geula is not set in time? Internal state or connection. What if that's how one person could actually bring redemption? Like one person stepped into the sea at first and then God split it. It wasn't like we had to split it. It wasn't like hundred percent. Yeah, things still happen, but they happened in a different way. It's like the whole it happened in a completely miraculous way. Yeah. So we could turn around and look at the, it's not like the journeys were over or the learning was over, but it was, there was the Mr. opportunity Snuffish. for. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the, it's a Messier Snefish. It's, it's a self-sacrifice kind of a thing that we all have the ability to do that, but it's dormant for, for most people. And it's those people that that like Nachshon ben Aminadav who walked in, who went into the ocean even before God told Moshe what to do. He was like, "We're God, told, I'm going in." And actually, that's one of the most important platoons in the Israeli army. It's called Nachshon, right? And those soldiers that are going in, and there there are so many of them that are like, "We want to be, uh, we want to go in there." And I think that that's something that is astounding about. The Jewish people, it's astounding about Israel that people from all over the world are watching and they are amazed. They are inspired, just like they were in the Six Day War, just as they were by in 73, it was like a, a little bit of a mess, in 48. And but they see that what's our power? What what is it really here? You know, it's not just that we have you know, the good military, you know, we have the, you know, the best military, whatever it is, is that we have the people that, that are stepping into it. Like you're saying about, you know, not necessarily everyone could do that, but when you see someone do that, when you see, when, when we have that sense, it, it, it ignites the dormant souls of others. And when the dormant soul of someone else gets awakened, then you don't even know what, what they're capable of. Right. They could be, they could be this incredible fire that you never even knew how great their neshama was, how high their neshama was, and they could ignite so many others because, like the Alter Rebbe says, like we can't understand the, the the levels of souls, and if one thinks that they're on a certain level and the someone else is on a lower level, well, you never know really who's higher than who. So one may have done the job to awaken someone else, but then because that person became awakened, then they were able to do such an amazing work to awaken others. And that dormant soul now becomes an active soul and becomes that light. I think sometimes this, sometimes it's those of us or those times or those phases in our life where we feel like nothing, like we feel like I, I don't have, I, don't know until we get activated and activations happen in stages it's not just a one-time thing but when, when we get activated we can see things coming out of us that we never imagined that we would either be able to perceive or to act on or to overcome it's really true like the greatness that's within us the godliness that's within us the supernatural that's within us we don't maybe we know it to a small degree some of us but if, if 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 you went from one level where you didn't see something and then all of a sudden you have access to something deeper and bigger and more miraculous, that means that 
it's just going to get greater and deeper. It's like the, the deeper you go in, the more powerful it is. Yes. So it seems like that's in a, in a very big way. That's the call of the hour to find God inside. Yeah. Yeah. You know, someone was, was ask was, was asking me today about like, what did she wanted to know what I thought about, what is the spiritual meaning of, of hostages that there were, first of all, like hostages taken so many of them. May Hashem bless them, bring them all back safely on all levels. Amen. But, whew, but what does that mean? And I think that it means that our, to bring back the hostages means that we need to be active to go to that place of darkness and to awaken that light that is still there and to extract those sparks. Mm -hmm. And that means that it's almost like that, that the coal, that the coal becomes just, it, it becomes so, it, it, it awakens all of those sparks that are, that are, that are there and, and it ignites them. And in a way, like Hashem is basically telling us, we want all of those, those, those soldiers back safely and all of the hostages back. And it's not enough just to wish it, but we have to like really step up the game and notch up and to be and to really be that light in order to extract that that spark, that dormant light that's there in the dark places. And again, going into that analogy of you know, we're igniting each other, but like at the end of the day, this is what we have. This is what we're doing. This is why Hashem has brought this to, 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 to us, that we're all, we all need to awaken. We're all awakening, you know, in the world, the, the, the Jewish people now, you know, students that didn't even know that they were Jewish or didn't even care about what it means. All of a sudden on college campuses, they're like, you're Jewish. Guess what? What does that mean? And they had that, and they have that throughout the world, throughout the world. And again, in Gentiles as well, like, what does that mean to you? Now you're watching something that happened back in 1938. Are you going to stand back, you know, as a bystander again? Or are you going to say never again and really say never again? Like the world didn't do to our brothers yeah. and sisters in the Holocaust. So that's awakening a, a, a light, a spark. And, you know, so we're not dormant anymore. You know, those sparks are, are, are awakened. And uh, we're awakening each other. We're inspiring each other. So you have, you know, people on the front line, and then there's people who are doing the work like, like you are, Shifra, like, like I am. And, and 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 people who who are you know who are there feeding people people that are donating people that are you know um, posting on social media people that are doing everyone's doing what they can you know and doing the best that they can um, as much as as much as they can you know and and that's that's the way to then awaken someone else. You know, because the people in the front lines need people like you and me to go and to inspire them and to give them the strength of what they're actually doing, why they're doing. Right. And they need the the food that the others, other people are cooking for them. There's nothing better than home cooked food. Right. And we all need each other. They need the tzitzi. Everybody. Need the tzitzi. That apparently that's the big that. thing. Yeah. <laughs> kind of amazing. So how, how do you, how do you see, I don't even know how to ask this question. Let me try it, there's a there's a lot of confusion in all kinds of ranks of people because there's so many different layers and perspectives on this. There's like, how, let's start with the you know how did God do this? How did God let this happen? And then like what is the what is the goodness that He's trying to bring out? That's one. How did the government let this happen? Or what? Or worse, 
but then there's the army that's fighting um, to protect us. And yet did that have to happen? Like, uh, sh who should we be? It's like, I, I don't even know how deeply I should go into it, but it, there's a lot of confusion about at what level the problem came from and at what level it should be fought. And it, it, it I'm, came, I'm very curious what you have to say it, about it. it. I mean, it, it came from, now it's not something that I'm saying, something that the Rebbe said, the Lubavitcher Rebbe said, it came from self-doubt and complacency. And the Rebbe said this regarding the Leban first Lebanon war, where they went in and they didn't finish the job. They literally saw the PLO get on a, a on a boat. They could have bombed the boat. Could you imagine? Was it the the remnants of the PLO were in Damascus and President yeah. Reagan was in charge? I remember the Rebbe in the seven seventies, like yelling, like Mordechai. It was a Jewish inferiority complex. So, yes. Mordechai lo yichre ve lo yishtachve. Remember? Right, that? right, right. Exactly. So, what's the answer? why all of this is happening because of failed well at the end of the day we're in the here and now and this is where hashem obviously it's yeah, but what truth it, are we it, supposed it meant, to see it was meant to be that way but at the same time there is that inferiority complex of the politicians caring about what the world was saying and the rebbe said that it was likened to an operation where someone is like on the operating table they opened that that patient up they're in the middle of heart they're, they're they're there and they're saying one second we gotta you know we gotta we gotta stitch this person up and we gotta come back at a, a different time and try again. it's like are you crazy are, are, are you you're in the middle right now in the war in, in lebanon and we're in the middle of such a sensitive time and it is the time to finish the job and that meant to really put out, extinguish that negativity that was there in the form of the PLO. And it was before the Hezbollah because the Hezbollah actually came on the scene afterwards with Iran, Iran proxies because they had that, that because Israel left and they saw that as a sign of weakness. And it goes back to the Rebbe said, because Jews are not believe we're not, we didn't believe in our own strength and, and in the strength of Hashem, of the Almighty that gave us the Torah and gave us the land of Israel and having that inner, that confidence. And again, which is what we're talking about all the, the whole evening. It's like that inner confidence is not just, it's not a political thing. It's not just, but it's that, what we call Gaon Yaakov, that, that pride, that inner, that inner Jewish pride of not pride, like, Oh, I'm this and I'm, we're the high tech of this. And we're the, the we did that arrogance, not an arrogance, but the pride of like, we are bringing Hashem into the world. We are a compass of goodness for the world. We are this place that is helping the world by everything that is that we're creating to better humanity, right? To bring more light, to bring more connection, to bring more. And coming from that, from that idealistic Jewish place, as opposed to that liberal left leaning um, evas evading God place of we're like all the nations and we have that that inferiority complex as as the Jews which is that exile mentality and and the idea of the of the of the Gaula mentality is we're here on our land and we're not scared you know we are we have faith in Hashem that 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 exile mentality is like Oh, they're all nice. They're all good. And that's what allowed on October 7th, 6th at night, the head of whoever was meant to be in charge of the whole intelligence there gets a call. He's on vacation that, you know, there's a bunch of people on the fence here. And he's like, no, nah, 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 nah. they're going to sleep. They're, 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 they're just, you know, don't worry about it. You know, that seems pretty it, nefarious. Oh yeah, you no, know, it's crazy. It's it's crazy. but but the point is that they thought that Hamas was subdued, and they didn't realize that. No, Hamas is looking at was looking at us and looking at our, uh, our lack of unity, 
that we, that that we had and where we weren't the land of Israel right and and it was like oh you know and that that again evil pops up but it pops up to remind us that this is who we are and this is who our enemy is and this is what must be I mean, regardless of regardless of how we see the players and what we think really happened, um, I think a lot of us have a lot of thoughts about it and a lot of questions about it. But regardless, yeah, that remains the bottom line that that um, like I asked somebody because some people have been out there saying that God's really angry at us. He's you know he's pissed off, and then when I asked somebody um, at one at one point who. I'm sure God that any, us. we're, we're yeah, his people. Right. God loves right. us. Exactly. Exactly. Us. Exactly. Like, exactly. Like you say, he said, this is nothing to do with anger. It's God is bringing redemption plain and yes, simple. Exactly. So, and the, and the whole anger thing is, is not, a is not really the, 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 the approach. And, and the, you know, I did a class on this on Gogo Magog because I was watching all these like scary, you know, like doomsday kind of like, I was watching a couple of them and then I said, enough, you know, like kind of a yeah. thing. Um, because the approach of the Rebbe and the approach of like the Tzaddikim is like, no, we're going to, we're, we're, it's how you read the, how you understand the verses. And it's basically God loves us. And he's bringing this, uh, uh, he's bringing this to awaken us. And even now all the craziness that happens all around is that is happening all around us. It's a wake up call. You know, but we shouldn't forget that Hashem loves us and we have to do what we have to do in terms of either coming to Israel, in terms of being, you know, Israel. In other words, in our, in our, in our, and by doing so, we, we are, we're 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 guarded, you know. We're guarded from, you know, from 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 this negativity. You know, I, I want to just share like a story, an unbelievable story that happened in one of the kibbutzim in Beiri. This lady says the story. Actually, she she was one of the few people that kept Shabbat in this in this very secular kibbutz, and uh, they came obviously on on Shemini Atzeres and Simchas Torah right after Sukkot. She's she's there. She's she's in her safe room, and she is um, just hiding. And basically, they uh, they bomb everything, and they walk away. And after a couple of hours of of hiding, she comes out of the safe room, and she looks. The whole house is pretty much destroyed, except for her sukkah. Mm -hmm. So the sukkah was remained. the The sukkah remained, which the whole idea of the sukkah is very much an indication of what do we rely on? Do we rely on our homes, on our finances, on our strength, on our this and that? Or do we rely on Hashem? And being in the sukkah is a testament to relying that we're in the faith, the Zohar says, in the, in the, in the shadow of the faith of Hashem. We're sitting in the faith of Hashem. And right after Sukkot is where we got this, you know, this, this war. And actually it's brought down by, uh, in the Shulchan Aruch, it's brought down by Rav Haigon, that the war of Gog and Magog is going to break out right after Sukkot. Meaning that the an anecdote, the an antidote, sorry, to, to um, this war and to Gog and Magog is the Sukkah, is the faith that we have in the transient. And the faith that we have in Hashem, that Hashem is watching over us. Right. I that read we're guarded in, and we're loved, we're protected, we are embraced, right? That's that's the point. I read from Rabbi Shimshin Paul Hirsch that Gog, it comes from the word Gog, which refers to the sukkah, that it doesn't have a Gog, that the, the Gog meaning roof, that it's, yeah, that yeah. Uh, yeah, that God is the roof. We take away the roof because we don't need the roof over our head that represents everything you're talking about. We're capped, we're limited. Also that, but but also like, what do we what do we strive for in life? I've got to have a roof over my head. I got to make it. I've got to survive. I got to build my I've got to build my this. I got to get the love. I got to get the the money. I've got to get the, I, I, and maybe I'll lose it and in, in 
that whole, it represents everything that we have in the physical plane and even on the emotional plane. And yet the roof, when we're in, in the sukkah, we, it's just the clouds of glory. It's just an intimate space with God. And, you know, yeah. anyone who comes in. Yeah, it's really yeah very intense times very <laughs> very intense i, I want to actually read to you a little portion from the zohar which is actually a very very powerful um quote. yeah and if you would i wanted to ask you also if you yes. have any more to say about the lost tribes you mentioned that the zohar talks about how they're all going to come back just, yeah. just throwing that in since you're opening oh, the zohar. so it actually says about one of the lost tribes uh reuven is going to come along and make wars in the world and the way actually some of the, um, I guess, historians understand who the tribe of Reuven is, is, um, is the Taliban. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Reuven. Oh yeah, yeah. That's Talk what about say. being our own worst enemies, right? Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, they're, they're going to make war and they're going to make this and that and they're going to fight against. Uh, the people, and then, you know, listen, they're intense sparks, and we, we don't, you know, we, we don't, we don't understand exactly who is who and where the, where those tribes are, but definitely they're mixed all around the world, and we're going to hear of a lot of um, Jewish people that are all of a sudden, they never thought that they were Jewish, all right. of a sudden, like, oh, I come from this tribe, oh, I'm from that, oh, I'm, and, um, you know, we're going to have a lot of, you know, all of us are going to be very busy in teaching and in, and in, and in, you know, empowering because at that time, the, the, the occupation of the world will be to know Hashem, to be, to, to know Hashem. And that will, that is going to be the occupation and but to know we'll have a job of a good occupation. <laughs> like, no, no. Yeah. That's what we're going to be occupying. I remember when I was in years ago at the I guess it was the time of the first of the first Gulf War, and somehow this page started going around, which was apparently a quote from the previous Rebbe, where he talked about how when there's war, you should even in a place as far away as Afghanistan, which originally it, it was that you shouldn't be afraid because that is behind that is the place of the lost tribes. Behind, right. who are hiding behind the river Sambatyon and they're fierce warriors. And when they see that their, their brethren are in trouble, they're going to come out and fight for us. I never, yeah, it, it's amazing. Yeah. I, I don't know what it means. I, you know, I don't yeah. know if it's happening yet, but that Zohar. would be interesting, right? That That's from the yeah. Zohar? Yeah. Oh, so, because it's so tough. Okay. That, that, Say at more. The of, that at the end of days, that the, 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 the fierce tribe of Reuben is going to make wars. Um, you know, and, and, and again, you know, we, we don't understand who the rest of the tribes are, but they're going to eventually be, they're going to, we're going to fight against them, but eventually they're going to, that, that they're part of the tribes. So, <laughs> yeah, we don't know what that's going to look like exactly, but in there's a lot, a lot of, a lot, a lot of Jewish people in the world. There's a lot of weirdness. It's like sometimes I feel lately like I have moments that sometimes frequently where I feel like none of this is even real. I don't think it's disassociation. I think it's flipping up into another, like another space. And um, it's almost like that we're in a certain sense, maybe we'll remember that there was, there's really only one of us. Like, you know, Adam, Adam was one. Yeah. with all these different roles it's it's hard to see it and yeah. i don't even want to see it in the normal course of events but when we get into a more elevated space what is really going on here? it's like it's so it's so mysterious and it's so deep and i think and i kind of feel like except when we actually have to do something on the physical plane it seems like maybe it's better to be in touch with that with it's this weird, strange, awesome, great unfolding that God is doing. It's like ultimate revelation of what is reality. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Israel is actually, um, Yisrael is Jacob. But it says that the Zohar says that Yisrael had the same face as Adam. Shufre de Yaakov ke Shufre, actually the word Shifra means, uh, means, the, means the face or the beauty of the face of Yaakov, 
right? Or the beauty of Yaakov is the same beauty as Adam. And the, the Zohar perfection. says that he's he's the perfection. He's the he's the fixing of Adam. Well, so Adam or Israel is at Atem Kruim Adam. You're called um, Adam. And, um, you know, uh, well, actually, yeah, Pashtun. That's that's true. They're they're from the lost tribes of Israel. They say that. No, the Brahmins come from Abraham. They say they're Brahmins. like remnants of this. Is, we it's right. just a weird world. It's yeah. Wow. Yeah. To, I mean, I, what I'm saying weird, but it's the depths of what of what what we're, what we're not seeing are vast. Vast, yeah. To, yeah, to, totally vast. But like, we have to be Adam, and what does that mean to be Adam? to rise to our Israel level, to rise up to our Adam level, because at the end of the, at the end of the day, like we're here to be Adam, right? And Adam is singular. And we're all a portions of B'nai Adam, of the, of the spark of Adam. And, you know, going back to that, in it, to that fixing of Adam, Kabbalistically, we're here to fix the sparks, raise the sparks, be go back to the collective body of Adam. And uh, we've already done mo most of the job. Right now we're on the heels of Adam. That's how it's explained that Ikva said the Mashiach were at the level of the heel. The heels are also the most difficult, the most callous place. Yeah. And I was just actually, I gave a class the other week on Ishmael, on the exile of Ishmael. It's called the fifth exile because we've got on, on by Daniel's uh, prophecy, he sees the feet of Nebuchadnezzar's idol and the feet, half of them are made out of metal and the other are made out of clay, representing that at the end of exile, there is going to be Rome. That's going to split up. Actually, that's the way the Maral says. And then uh, the clay, which is which is um, which is Ishmael, and we're right here on 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 the on the ground over here, and we're doing this this last collective generation pitch. But with that, it's called Makabe Patish. It's like it's like the the end. It says the the one that puts the last you know finishing touch and everything. It's as if they did it all. But we're putting the last finishing touches on Gulfs, like any one of our mitzvahs, any one of our good deeds, right, could tip the scale, could take the world from being 50-50 and from our lives being 50-50 and just one good mitzvah, one good deed has the, has the, the power tip to collect it, the, to tip it over, right? The, from the Rambam said it, the Rebbe used to say that he said it all, all the time. Um what was the yeah. Zohar you were going to share when I interrupted you? Yeah. No, so it, it's it's a very, very beautiful um, piece over here that says that that sitting in the sukkah is the secret of emuna Because when we sit in the in the sukkah, and it goes into some deep concepts over here. What happens is that we affect what is called the sukkah David Hanufelet, the falling sukkah of David, which is a, which is a reference to the Shekhinah, to the divine presence. Right? We say this in in benching in in um, in, in you know, the Greece. messianic dynasty dynasty also. Of the, exactly. So it's called, there's the Sukkah of David. Actually, Yushalayim is called, right, Sukkah, right? It's called Sukkot Yerushalayim. Apor is Sukkot Shalom Aleinu, the Sukkah. Of, and when we sit in the Sukkah for seven days, what we do is we affect this falling down Sukkah of, of David. And, and the Zohar says another thing, it says that, why do we have to sit in the sukkah for all these days? Because when we sit in the sukkah, what we actually do is we affect the world. We affect the rest of the world. And this is a job that was done in temple times during the holiday of Sukkot. It actually is brought down in Zechariah, those that those that have Sukkot specifically to Jerusalem, Jerusalem will have rain. Why? Because, because uh, the, the Jewish people 
were bringing up uh, sacrifices for the entire world. So, uh, so on Sukkot, when we sit in the sukkah, so it says that the sukkah sometimes is written with a vav and sometimes without a vav. And the, the hidden vav or without a vav is like this falling sukkah, which is, which is going on, on in the rest of the world. And when we sit, and the point that I just wanted to bring, when we sit in our sukkah, which is with a vav, with a consciousness, that's the way the Zohar puts it. There's a sukkah with the letter vav, which is drawing down. Again, drawing down the presence of, of being in that queue, being in that space, and being not gog, having the gag, the ceiling, but, ha- sit, but sitting in the infinite possibilities of Hashem, mm-hmm. of the Creator. And we sit in there, and we sit in that, in, that suk- in that sukkah, so then what we do, we affect the sukkah of David, <clears throat> which is there in the world, and we affect the whole world by our presence. Of sitting in the sukkah. And from there, the czar says we go from there to the eighth day, which is Simcha Torah, right? Which is which is right after. This year was a very different Simcha Torah that um that we had. And it says that this joy, when is this full joy going to culminate? and have this complete unity, it's going to happen on Simchat Torah. Mm. So we were interrupted. Um, and we were interrupted to just remind us that this is where it's at. It's at and sitting in our sukkah. We may feel like there's a storm going on. And wherever we are are at, wherever our minds are at, but if we could just have that that presence and that imagery of sitting in our space, sitting in our sukkah, just like that lady in that kibbutz where everything in her house was destroyed, but the sukkah was not, and this was on Israeli news, and they were like, they couldn't believe it. Like nothing was affected. None of none of her decorations or none of the it, it, astounding. You, you, it was like in perfect condition, and that's what we're asked to do. We're asked to go into the storm, to be in the eye of the storm, without all the old gear that we are necessarily used to putting up. But we're but putting on the real gear, the real like, you know, the real spiritual armor the real spiritual armor which are the mitzvot which are sitting in the sukkah which is sitting in shabbat those of us that are keeping shabbat you know to make sure that we can keep it you know even on a higher level on a, on, on a more of a you know on a more of a halachic level to light the candles on a little bit earlier you know though the, you know those of us that that we can sit in this place of giving of of you know, there's there's so many ways that we can be in that space of embodying emuna, of living, you know, of living that emuna, um, and living in that, being in that sukkah. Although our our homes, right, seem like they're bombarded, right, but our sukkah is intact, and the storm's mm-hmm. raging, but we're in the sukkah and we're not scared. Because we know we're surrounded by the Shekhinah, by the presence of 